Vicki Spriggs, CEO of Texas Casa. And my guest today is Sarah Underwood, State CRCG Coordinator. I have to laugh when I say that because it is a mouthful. Um, I know it's an acronym for CRCG, Community Resource Coordination Groups, right? Yes. Super. How long have you been in that position, Sarah? I've been in that position since last April. Super. Mm -hmm. So would you tell our viewers about what is a CRCG or Community Resource Coordination Group? Sure. Uh, Community Resource Coordination Group is an interagency staffing group. They're county-based. Um, some serve one county, some serve multiple counties, and they serve uh, individuals and families to meet their needs and connect them with services and supports. Um, CRCGs are made up of a bunch of members, so there'll be folks from public and private agencies, um, nonprofits, there'll be family representatives, really any stakeholder from the community will come together and be a member of a CRCG. Um, and they will meet with individuals and families and assess their needs and make sure that they're connected with appropriate services. They primarily serve three functions. So the first, like I said, they uh, meet with individuals and families. These people typically have complex needs. Um, they're usually being served already by one or two agencies and they really need that cross-system coordination and have those agencies and those providers come together um, and to discuss what their strengths are, what their needs are, and to find and pull different resources and services throughout the community and to ensure that their needs are met. Um, a second thing that they do, by bringing all of those members and stakeholders together, it creates a space for those individuals to learn what resources are in their community. Um, we hear from a lot of providers and CRCG leaders that before they were a part of a CRCG, they thought that they knew all of the resources and supports that were available. And by bringing people together, they uh, teach one another, they learn about resources, they connect, they look at gaps and barriers, they figure out um, how to streamline services and how to come together to make sure that uh, the services and supports that they're providing people are the best that they can be. Then the third thing that they do is address gaps and barriers. So they identify them by uh, serving people with complex needs. They um, are able to then see usually pretty clearly throughout their community, things that are missing or things that could be strengthened. And so within a CRCG, they might be able to address some of those things um, within that group by coming up with creative solutions. And then otherwise, they'll take that information and they'll um, share it with other stakeholders. So it might be a local system of care in their community. It might be elected officials. And then every two years, they share their data and information with our office and we write a, a legislative report. We actually just released ours this month. Um, and so we'll look at their strengths, we'll look at their gaps and barriers throughout their community, and then these larger systems can uh, work to address those. Super. Mm -hmm. So that is that community resource coordination aspect of that. Yes. Who calls those meetings? How do those meetings come together? Uh, for each individual. Mm -hmm. We're just staffing a case. Yeah. Sure. So uh, anyone can make a referral. The individual themselves can make a referral, a family member, um, a provider, and they will locate their local CRCG. The best way to do that would be to go to the CRCG website to uh, search by city or by county. And then the leader's information, contact information will come up and they can email or they can call that person. That person will let them know what the referral process is like, um, what forms they need to fill out, what information they need to bring, and then a staffing will be scheduled. So uh, typically most CRCGs meet monthly. A staffing will be scheduled. That person, that fam their family, um, any supports that they want to come with them will join in that conversation. They'll meet with all of the members. They'll share their strengths. They'll share their barriers, um, their current resources, and really just explain to the group what their needs are. Then the group, um, along with the individual and family, will come up with an individualized service plan and try to find creative ways and different solutions that the person hasn't yet tried or been connected with. After the meeting, typically the referral agency, because these folks are usually working with someone already, so maybe it's a probation officer or um, a therapist, that person will continue to coordinate with the individual and family and make sure that they're connected. Super. So two questions. One is, you said they can go to the CRCG website. What is that? That is crcg.hhs.gov.tx. Super. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the other is, would it be appropriate for a CASA volunteer to seek to have a CRCG staffing of their child? 
Absolutely, um, and it would be a, an appropriate referral because typically those cases are very complex with lots of uh, key people at play and the children typically need you know, different uh, resources and have people come together and coordinate those services. Super. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the successes that you all have experienced? Because I know there's some amazing things happening through CRCGs. Yes, there are. Um, so a lot of the success stories that we've recently heard came through our legislative report data gathering. And uh, I think we heard from about 50 CRCGs that wanted to share amazing success stories. A uh, couple that stood out um, to me and that we're furthering to um, get information from and possibly uh, hear more about their stories and kind of build some material so that we can share these with the public. One story was of a child that was being staffed and the grandparents came with the child and the CRCG leader said that uh, almost instantly they became aware that the grandparents also had needs. So it wasn't just the child that needed maybe mental health services or supports within the school. Um, the grandparents were really struggling because obviously they had another child in their home now. Um, they had a lot of stressors that may, they may otherwise not have had. And so the CRCG was able to connect the grandparents and the child with services. And they reported that you know nine months to a year later that the child was doing well in school, was doing well at home. Um, the grandparents had the services that they need and they felt needed and they felt really supported. Um, one other story that was interesting and I thought uh, spoke to how creative solutions that CRCGs can come up with, it was a child who had, uh, has autism and was really struggling in school and in the home with behavioral issues, um, getting in trouble in the school. And uh, the family and the child came to the CRCG staffing and the family talked about how the child had physical health needs and um, just wanted to be really active, but they didn't have a safe place for the child to be active because they, um, I think they lived next to railroad tracks or something where they needed a fence around their house so that the child could go out and play. And the CRCG found community members that were willing to build a fence for the family. Um, so then the child was able to go outside and play and the parents didn't have to worry about their safety. They also connected the child and family with um, mental health and behavioral health services within the school and within the home. And uh, they said that previous to the connection with the CRCG, the um, child was really struggling in school and afterwards uh, was a great success, was a star student, um, was helping teachers, was being a role model within their school. And so um, that, to me, that was just a wonderful success story. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it really speaks to what happens when people sit down and talk about um, what resources, when people are, mm -hmm. are taking that common outcome of success for the individual look at a client? Because, I mean, if you look at it, each entity is doing their best, right. but it's in their silo. Mm -hmm. But it's when you get out of the silos and people start really looking at the issue and thinking about what is best for this child, that the creativity and the sparks and the resources really start manifesting. Exactly. Is that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what has been, because you, again, you haven't been there that long, mm -hmm. so what has been your wow moment? Hmm. That's a good question. Well. I guess my wow moment that I get somewhat often is when I go out into the communities and I meet with leaders and I meet with members and I see how passionate they are. These leaders typically aren't getting paid for their role, they're volunteers, they're coming together because they're very passionate about meeting the needs of their community and the stories that they tell and um, the time and effort that they put in to make this happen. And CRCGs have been around since the late 80s. And this has all come from this, this passion and this interest by community members to come together and um, connect with people. Yeah, it's funny, because I hadn't said this before, but I was around when um, CRCGs mm -hmm. were first formed and I was on the state CRCG group and working to put all this together. And was it Sherry Hammock, yes. I think, was the person <laughs> who was leading the charge for the Health and Human Services Commission. Mm -hmm. um, so I was there way back when, and you're right, it was the commitment of individuals who saw the value mm -hmm. um, of what happens when people sit down with a common purpose right. that has really kept it going all these years. I'm yes. really excited about your leadership Thank there you. too. So um, I expect to continue to hear wonderful things because um, I know they're in the hands of a really capable leader. Because I remember when you and I first had that opportunity to talk, I, I walked away feeling like, yep, there's another solid 10 years at least for this program. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. Do you have a vision for the future of the CRCG? Absolutely. Oh, good. You want to share that? Sure. We just came up with a strategic plan that we launched in January of 2019. Uh, it is to get CRCGs to serve people of all ages. So currently there's CRCGs across the state in 233 counties. 56% of those serve all ages, and the remaining uh, serve children, uh, youth, and their families. So this would happen either through some of those CRCGs taking on people of all ages, or in some communities having a second CRCG that would specifically um, serve adults. So that is one goal. Another goal is that they are trained and supported in best practices. So the CRCGs support the system of care model and philosophy and incorporate those values into um, their systems. So our plan right now, what we're doing is building a training curriculum and next year we will launch that and get out into communities and make sure that they have the support that they need. Super. Mm -hmm. Well folks, you heard it first here on Conversations with CASA. This is Sarah Underwood who is the state CRCG coordinator with us today. Sarah, thank you so much for coming and thank you for your leadership of the CRCGs. And again, um, I'm excited about the next 10 years plus under your leadership, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and thank you for viewing today. This is Vicki Spriggs with Conversations with CASA. I'll see you next time. <laughs>